Hi guys, uh, this is the Journal of an Explorer or with Journal of an Explorer's sister. Um, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Gina, uh, I'm Tasha's sister. Um, and you can find me on my Instagram here, The Food Diary by Saj. Um, so for those of you who've seen some of my brother's videos, you might know, you might have seen me in some of the more food related videos. I'm a bit of a foodie, must admit it. Um, and for the next few days, I'm actually gonna be in Sweden with some of my friends. So I thought I'd bring you guys along as well, show you some of the food that I find here in Sweden. Um, and hopefully you guys might get inspired next time you're in Stockholm. So first stop of the day, we're at a restaurant called Pelican. Um, now it's, Pelican's quite well known for serving quite traditional Swedish food for slightly affordable prices. Um, so we're gonna be checking it out um, and seeing what they've got for us. Hopefully some really nice Swedish food. Uh, so Pelican is kind of a classical Swedish restaurant. Um, it's been serving kind of traditional Swedish food for since the 17th century, I think it is. Um, this particular location only opened about 100 years ago, um, but it's pretty well known in the area for serving really good sw Swedish food. So we thought we'd give it a try. Um, so I actually ordered something like some beef dish and then some of my friends ordered the meatballs, which are really lovely. But um, I would say that it is slightly pricey for what it is but it is good Swedish food. So if you guys want to try local cuisine, then this is definitely a place to try. I'm pretty sure a lot of the locals would recommend it. Um, yeah, definitely definitely worth it. So today's day two. Um, so to start off our day, we went to Greasy Spoon, which is, it's like a brunch spot in Stockholm. There's quite a few locations actually, but it's mainly inspired by British food, but it's quite popular around here. And it's a really good place to get some brunch if you're around. Um, I got the fried chicken waffle. Some of my friends got like the quesadilla and I think it was a Philly cheesesteak. Apparently it was nice. Um, but I quite like the fried chicken. Maybe a little bit too sweet because uh, it had like some honey in it, but otherwise it was quite good and I'd recommend. So we just stopped over at a cafe in Gamlestan for some fika. Got myself a cinnamon bun and a hot chocolate. So I'm gonna enjoy myself some fika. Next stop for the day is a place called Meatballs for the People. Uh, so it's right behind me there. So as you can guess from the name, it's a place selling meatballs and loads of different varieties of it too. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Sweden's really well known for their meatballs. Um, in fact, like for those of you who love sort of getting food at Ikea, you'll know that the meatballs are quite a specialty there. Um, so ever since I knew I was coming to Sweden, meatballs was definitely one of the things I really wanted to try. And I've heard really great things about Meatballs for the People. So let's have a look at how their meatballs taste and I'll let you know. First stop of day three is a bakery called Fabric, which is right behind me. So Fabric is a bakery that specializes in kind of stone oven baking basically. Um, and they have a few locations in Stockholm. They also have a few locations in London and New York as well, but I think it's more of a Swedish thing. Um, so I'm excited to try some of the sort of pastries here. One thing I'm really looking to try is the cinnamon bun. So I did have the cinnamon bun yesterday as well, which I really like, so I might get it again. Um, it's something called the cannibula, which is really, I might, I might be saying that wrong, but it's quite well known around here. Um, so we might have a go at trying the one here, or we might try something different. We went to Fabric and I got myself the cinnamon bun that I was talking about, which is quite well known around here. I thought it was really nice. I really liked it. Um, I did mention I had the cinnamon bun yesterday as well at the other cafe and I think this one was a lot nicer in my opinion. So we stopped by Max, which is it's kind of like a Swedish version of a Swedish fast food restaurant basically. Um, and there's like a whole chain of them around here. Um, I went for the sort of the barbecue chicken meal. I really liked it. So we're now at Ostermalm Salahall, which is a food market in Stockholm. This food market opened in 1888, so it has been around for a while. Now this food market is apparently named the world's seventh best food market. I mean, even Jamie Oliver has apparently claimed that this is actually one of his favourite food markets. So uh, we're inside the food hall now. Um, there's a lot of food sort of markets and stores in here, a lot of fresh ingredients. 
Um, you can also buy loads of sweet treats. And there's also a few restaurants in here as well, which is nice. Um, I've just bought myself a few little goodies to take home for my family. Um, so we've got ourselves the chocolate biscuit. You see in the back there. It's like a Swedish, Swedish chocolate meringue biscuit. Um, it looked really nice, so I thought I'd try it. And it was relatively affordable, so I thought I'd go for it nice and cheap. Um, but yeah, definitely worth coming to have a look at. There's loads of little nibbly bits that you can buy, um, but you can also come here for a proper meal if you really wanted to as well. And for locals or people who are staying here for a while, good place to get fresh ingredients, fresh local ingredients as well. So we've just arrived at a cafe called Vetikatan, I believe it is. Um, going to be trying something called semla, which is a Swedish custard bun. Uh, I've also got that with some hot chocolate, turn it into a little bit of a fico as well. Uh, but quite excited to try this one. So for our sort of last dinner here in Stockholm, uh, we went to a place called Bird, which is a Swedish kind of fried chicken spot. Uh, there's two spots in Stockholm actually. There's one sort of in the city centre, and then there's one a little bit sort of further down. We went to one in the city centre. Um, and the food was good. I got myself the buttermilk fried chicken, which is really nice, and the spicy wings, which was okay. Uh, it wasn't brilliant, but I, it was okay. Uh, my friends got mac and cheese, which was apparently really good. Uh, I don't eat dairy that much, so I didn't try the mac and cheese. But if you guys like dairy, then mac and cheese is worth giving a go. Um, but yeah, definitely a good meal. Um, not too expensive. They're kind of more like small plates rather than big kind of heavy meals, which is quite nice. Um, but definitely recommend. It's a good place to try out if you love chicken. So for our last kind of food stop for the end of the trip, we went to the Stockholm Brunch Club for some brunch. Uh, so Stockholm Brunch Club, pretty well known around here for doing some really good brunch. Uh, they're very vegan friendly, all their drinks are basically vegan. Um, and they're also dog friendly too. And they also have a really good selection of food. So I actually ended up getting the bagel special of the month. Um, and also got myself a really nice hot chocolate. Um, and I really liked it, it was really good food and really filling as well. Um, and the food came really quickly as well, you didn't have to wait very long for it, which was nice. Um, but that does conclude my food tour of Stockholm. Um, we're about to head to the airport now. Overall, it's been really good. Lots of good food I've had. I would say one thing I've really noticed in Sweden is there are loads and loads of independent cafes around here. Fika is a really big sort of cultural kind of daily kind of activity for the local people here. And for food, there's loads of great places for brunch um, and also some really good places for some traditional Swedish dinner. To some of which we've visited in this video. Probably one of my favorites being meatballs for the people, uh, but Pelican was quite good as well. Hopefully that this video has inspired you in some way for your next trip to Stockholm. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed seeing some of the food that we got to try out. Some of the local pastries and cakes are quite well known around here, including the semla and the cannel bulla, so the cinnamon bun and the custard bun. Um, but I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, for those of you who are interested in following more of my food journey, don't forget to follow my Instagram here, The Food Diary by Serge. And for the rest, um, and also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the video, um, to this channel, I mean. And I'm sure my brother will be back with another video very soon.